what we got here is a little bit of rust. This is rust right here. Look at the back of that panel. Do you see that? That sucks. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to treat that rust. And I can't guarantee, because I'm not going to sit here and say this is a guarantee 100% that it's going to kill the rust 100% and get rid of it forever and ever and ever, because that there's no way that'll happen. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to treat that rust, and we're going to uh, protect it and convert it, you might say, into a black primer, very simple, very easy, and very cheaply, I might say, economical. That's going to let us keep our situation here um, where we have a rust problem. Now, the reason that this fender rusted out uh, is because what happens is up here on the top of the fender, water will run down. And then if you look at this fender brace in here, you'll see that the water would run down inside it and then it would gather up right here. Um, we're actually really lucky that it didn't ruin this lip section right here and also over here on this edge. Uh, but you got to understand, this is a 1966 car. This is 19, I'm sorry, this is 2017. So that car is, uh, let's see, would it be 41 years old or 51 years old? Something like that. Anyway, that's lasted a long time. This is the original fender. We want to keep that. And we want to restore the original sheet metal, then apply ourselves to going out and purchasing aftermarket sheet metal for this car because we all know what aftermarket is. Pure junk. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Let's go ahead and get started with this. What you saw me do, you saw me cut that rust out and I actually put a piece of tape around it and then framed it out. Then we cut it out where I wanted it. And I wanted to keep some meat over here on this edge uh, due to the reason that I didn't want to have to fold it over. Now, if I would have had to fold it over, that's okay. I could have cut it like this and we would have folded it over. But I really want to keep that factory edge if possible. And then what we did, we went ahead and removed the sheet metal off of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and keep that possibly for a pattern. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutting wheel, which is the uh, tool that I use to cut that off with. And if you don't have a cutting wheel, we're going to go over a couple other tools uh, that will work just as good. But I'm going to take my cutting wheel and I'm going to kind of clean it up using the edge of my cutting wheel as a cleaning device. And if you notice, I do have safety glasses on and in a situation like this, which I usually do 99.9% .9 of the time unless I'm making a video, is where a dust mask. You don't really want to breathe this in. This is dangerous. So I'm only doing this this way so I can talk to you and teach you. But always remember, safety is your number one situation when it comes to tools. Don't do anything without eye protection. Remember that. All right, so what I've done is I used my cutting wheel to clean that up, but we got a couple of other tools I want to go over with you that'll work just as good if you don't have a cutting wheel, and I'm going to use it anyway. I'm going to use it anyway, so I might as well show that to you as well. And what we're talking about is a good old-fashioned wire wheel. We want to take that wire wheel, put it on a drill. We want to get inside there and get those grooves really clean and make sure that we get rid of all that loose, nasty, dirty, uh, flaky rust that will come off so we can go ahead and treat our metal. Okay, so what we've done, we've taken our cutting wheel, we got rid of all the hard flaky stuff, we went ahead and used our wire wheel on our cordless drill to go ahead and clean everything else out. What we're going to do is we're going to take one more tool, and this is just a precautionist tool, um, you know, just to go over it one more time to say we did it, is I'm going to take my Rollo Lock, which is a 2 inch 36 grit Rollo Lock pad, uh, with my little air grinder here, and we're going to go ahead and clean that up as well. We're using it. 
All right, so if we look at it now, you can see we cleaned it up pretty good. I mean, we could go further with it and just keep on cleaning using wire wheels and wire brushes and this, that, and the other. And if you really want to get to the extent, you could go ahead and buy yourself a little portable uh, sandblaster and sandblast that, which would even make it even last longer. But in this situation, we're not going to do that because we don't need it. This is very strong steel. It's not rusted through, and all it is is pitted. And in my opinion, we've cleaned that up pretty good and it's ready to go ahead and give it our rust preventive treatment that I'm going to show you will help you do the job right because that's what it's all about here is doing it right and making sure that everything is done properly. Now before we go any further I would like to mention that the owner of this vehicle is on a budget, a very strict budget uh, due to family situations that have arised in the last year or so and since I was working on the car already he wants to go ahead and finish the car to uh, get it out of my shop and back into his garage. Now we're not going to go ahead and paint this, but part of the deal was that we were going to go ahead and fix this rust. And the original plan was that we were going to buy a panel for the fender. You can buy this aftermarket panel that's a complete replacement panel. We were going to go ahead and buy that and then we would go ahead and cut the spot welds off around the edge, cut it, and then we would replace perfect situation and that way we'd be able to get all the way up inside here where, you know, I'm sure this is where the rust stops right here. It doesn't really go up any farther because that's where, like I said, the leaves and the debris and all the dirt gathers and it just collects moisture. But, uh, yeah, that was our plan in the beginning. Now that he's on this strict diet style fucking budget situation, we have now went ahead and we are just cutting out what is rusted. And then we're going to treat this with the best way possible. And that's the situation here. All right, that's what we're talking about, is we're talking about budgets, we're talking about you're doing this at home, you're restoring this car, you know, this is going to last, what I'm going to show you will last another 50 years. It'll last longer than you own the car, is what I'm showing you. Trust me, I'm telling you this, you don't have to go to the extreme of spending thousands of dollars of sandblasting it and tearing it down in pieces and all this other shit. Don't be worried about rust. Rust doesn't sleep. But we can kill rust, we can stop rust to a point where it won't come back for a very long time. And the product I'm talking about is this product right here. This is called Rust Treatment. You can buy this at your local automotive parts supply store. I will tell you, I don't like to advertise, but I purchased this over at Napa Auto Parts. Um, I saw it over there. I tried it, I liked it, it really works good. And what it does, it converts that rust into a very hard enamel style, uh, what can we say, primer. It turns it solid black and it turns it in primer. Apply two to three full wet coats of this. You got to wait until it dries to actually, you know, see the situation and I'm going to show you that. But uh, this stuff really does work and I believe this can right here that I'm looking at, this can, of this rust treatment cost like six dollars or something five dollars and fifty cents six dollars you used to only be able to buy this through special suppliers um, that was not uh, available to the wholesale I'm sorry to the retail crowd such as you and me but now um, Napa Auto Parts carries this and I'm gonna tell you it really really works good so before you use this you want to go ahead and shake it up really good uh, I'm sure there's chemicals in there that have to be you know, mixed up to make it work properly. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to spray this area and we're going to try, we're going to get up as far as we can up in there and then we're going to saturate it down in here as well. And then we're going to let that dry and then we'll come back and we're going to do that two or three times to make sure that it's really, really coated good. And then we'll be back to see what happens, of course, when we're all done. But let me go ahead and at least put one coat on so you can see that in action. And then, when it's all done and we have applied our three full wet coats of right here, yes, then we'll come back and look at it again. So I'm just going to take it like this and I'm going to go ahead and spray that and you'll, sometimes you can see it where it'll just start turning black automatically. I'm going to get up inside there and I'm really going to saturate it as you can see, okay? I really want it to get saturated really, really well where that penetration will be really thick. 
So once that dries, we're going to come back. We're going to look at it with just one coat, I believe. And then after that, we'll come back after I apply three coats. And then we will see a difference. We'll be back. Like right now. Bam. Okay, it's been less than five minutes. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. Um, I want to show you something else here. And this is kind of a little tech tip of how people used to fix rust back in the day. I mean, they still do this, but uh, even I did it. Um, you know, you can only do for as much money as you got. You see what I'm saying? You can only repair something or go to the extreme for how much you can afford to do it. So when you're doing a paint job, let's say we're going to use that as an example on a car, and you can't pay the you know outrageous prices that most people charge and I'm saying you know some of these places are charging over a hundred dollars an hour to fix rust uh, you know you can't afford that I can't afford that if I was gonna restore a car and somebody told me it was gonna be a hundred bucks an hour I mean I couldn't fucking do it you know but uh, you know the body shops got to make money and if that's what they charge and, and they got those kind of customers more power to them the thing is, though, is we're doing it at home, though. See, we're doing it ourselves. We're not taking it to Mr. Fucking I charge over $100 an hour if you don't like it. Get the fuck out. Guy! If you get what I'm saying. So, I cut this out. You can see how I used my tape, but I cut it out. And then, I noticed that there was a lot of Bondo right here. And I'm going to show you. Um, I mean, you can tell where Bondo is. So, they actually took this Bondo. You can see there's Bondo on that right there. And it was rusted out right here, and then this is Bondo here. But watch this here. I went ahead and took this off. And look inside there and see what you see while I show you the back of this. This is actually Bondo right here that they filled. This was a big, giant rust hole, and they filled that up with Bondo um, is basically what they did. You can see I just broke it off. All right. And uh, I want to pull this out right here, and I want you to see what this is. Let me go ahead and reach back here. Uh, you can see I'm going to push it through there, but they actually, when they did this, they actually pushed it through. They didn't uh, pull it out. They actually put it in through the top and then stuffed it in there like this. And uh, before I tell anybody what that is, I want you to go ahead and leave a comment of what you think it is, because I'm going to tell you what it is anyway. But let's get involved here and leave your comment of what you think or you thought that was before my friend Pete told you what it is. There you go. Um, and as we're talking about comments, if you're not a subscriber to this channel right here, DIY Auto School, subscribe now. And also hit the notification button because when you do that, that will notify you of all the brand new videos that I uh, upload. And believe me, if you're a newcomer here, I upload a lot of videos, a lot of videos that can help you, the DIY guy that wants to do this himself. So now that we've thought about it and we got a couple answers of what you think it is, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And I want you to look real close. That's steel wool. Ew. Now that's steel wool right there. That's fine steel wool, not coarse steel wool. Now when I do that, because I'm not going to sit here and lie, I have used steel wool to fill holes in, and then you bondo it up. Everybody has. That's just a common way to fix rust the cheap way, where it'll last 10 or 15 years, or possibly more if you do it right. I use coarse steel wool. And I will stuff that hole, and then I'll pound that bondo in there, just like we saw. Um, where's that panel out? Right here. All right. And then, look, you can even see the steel wool on this right here. Look at that. There's the steel wool. So they did fill the hole in. All right. It wasn't just right here. Uh, they probably filled this whole area in wherever this came out of and stuffed it up inside there and then smashed the bondo in, basically just like I was telling you I do. Um, this is one way that you can fix your rust. If you're just doing a quickie in and out job and you want to paint your car, you know, why sit here and say, hey, you know, if you ain't going to do it this way, fuck you. You're a jerk off. You're a loser. No, that's not right. That's not right because you probably can't afford the $100 an hour that these jack off jack wads want to charge. So that's a way right there that this guy fixed the rust. And it seems to la that it lasted a long time um, just by looking at this doing my uh, FBI investigation style situation. I would say that this was probably done in the early 80s, uh, possibly to the mid 80s. This car was, the rust was fixed on it. I don't believe that the car's ever been painted. I believe this is the original color, but uh, they did fix some rust in it and possibly painted this fender. So 
That lasted a long time if you go back to the early 80s, if you believe it or not. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that and uh, let you know that that's one way to fix a rust problem and let it last for a very long time. Let's get back over here to our, um, our spray, our rust spray, and see what's going on with that. So as we look at it now, um, here's a before picture. And then this is after, about five minutes later, you can see that it's turning black, it's drying, and it is penetrating into that rust and converting that rust into a usable, uh, super hard finish of uh, penetration that will not kill the rust. I don't know if it'll kill it 100%. I can't sit here and say I'm a chemist, but it will cure that rust for a very, very long time and possibly longer than you will own the car. So you can see the difference from right here after using the rust treatment versus not using the rust treatment and only after one coat of the rust treatment you can see the difference. I'm going to go ahead and spray another coat on there because like I said I want to get it nice and juicy and make sure that that's covered very very well and I want to get at least three coats on it. So uh, convert your rust from this to this and make it worthy enough to say I'm going to have a rust free car as long as I own it and that's all I care about because I don't have the money to say I can charge and pay over $100 an hour for somebody to do this. Uh, this is Pete, my friend Pete. We got Russ treated here, Russ not treated. You tell me, you give me your opinion. What do you think about the situation? And uh, leave a comment below, right here below. And subscribe to me, DIY Auto School, that's me. And make sure you hit the notification button. And if you are a subscriber, click that notification button. Click it. Click the notification button so you can be notified every time I upload a video, which is quite often. And I'd like to say one more thing. Don't forget to join me and Minnie the Body Shop Girl on Friday nights around 6 o'clock Central Time, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time, around that time every Friday night for Live Lesson Fridays right here at DIY Auto School with my friend Pete. Minnie the Body Shop Girl's not here, but she will be here on Friday nights and make sure you tune into that. Hit that notification button so you can be the viewer of DIY Auto School to do it right, do it right, because if you're not doing it right, you're not doing it at all, buddy. All right, I put these fenders to the side because I wanted that, uh, yeah, the rust preventive stuff to really kick in. You can see this is dry, and I want you to take a good look at that. Um, it's really shocking and unbelievable that uh, this stuff has really done the trick to that extreme. It's really penetrated into the metal and it has created a barrier between the rust and the metal itself and converted everything to a solid hardcore black primer. And you can see where I painted the last coat right here and it really really works out good. So this is the situation you got. I just wanted to come back and show everybody this that uh, these are 100% authentic original uh, truth going on here. This is the truth. This isn't no shyster. This isn't black paint. You can see right here. I mean, even this, it's like real super thick. So the stuff works, believe me. And if you're looking for something that's going to work, this is it right here. Go over to your local. It says right here, destroys rust on contact. Uh, I'm starting to believe it might. So um, go over to your local Napa Auto Parts store and look this up and check it out because it's well, well worth $6 a can, I can tell you that. We'll see you later. Hm. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.